Hi again. As you already know, my name is Bohdan and I'm a Microsoft MVP and a part of the Net Foundation speakers community and a featured community blogs. All my blog you can write about Xamarin and Medium Gradients at Medium. And in the free time, you can grab me for different questions connected with Magic Gradients or Xamarin at Twitter. You can find it. What I'm doing. Uh, you can mostly face me in different conferences and Warsaw, Kraku, or Jashu. We have our own small meetups there. And during the COVID call down, we trying to make a couple interesting meetups with different MVPs from around the world. So I will be really proud if you join us in our next meetup and meetup page. You can find us just type in Kraku or Jashu summary. And first of all, would like to start from the ending. <laughs> and all Q&A, as you already know, will be in the end after end of my presentation. So don't be scared to write everything you want connected to my presentation. During the session, we try to answer everything in the end. I will not answering during my presentation. Sorry for that. And is this is really, really important slide. It's one link. So all links from my presentations, there are like 57 links with different video channels, different blog posts, persons who you need to follow, who you need is who you can inspire yourself and make your summary applications better. So we will hold here just for a moment while you're taking the screenshot so you can even scan. It's a valid barcode scan with the hertz. You can try it with your phone. And just in a couple of seconds, we are starting. As for this protest could come not only person from the Xamarin world, I will just have only two slides about what is Xamarin because you could check it out everything in the YouTube, in the official Microsoft documentation. We will just better describe it ever I can make it. But in short, we have two ways to write Xamarin application. Uh, Xamarin forms and Xamarin native. Xamarin forms, you write one, Thermal view, and it will be just the same UI in all applications, uh, in all uh, platforms. For example, iOS and Android, we'll focus on that both today. Mm -hmm. And Xamarin Native, you still can write a shared logic code, but UI will be just the same like you write it in the native solutions. For example, AXML files for Android and storyboards for iOS. But in 2021, I don't think it's a good idea to write a native summary application because we can achieve like 99% everything in the forms. That 1% that you can't still achieve is easily can be rewritten by custom renders. So I just would like you, if you start or you write any existing project, try to convert to forms because it's the future. Because as you may hear, it, in the end of this year, we'll have the revolution of summary forms, uh, Maui. It's not something different completely. We just remove everything that was bad during all the years because summary form is really old right now and adding everything we want to see there. New features that could just replace different projects, different configuration into only one, into only one configuration files, which is made for you easier to start new solutions, to add different changes, platform specific changes. So the push will be not have a lot of thousand clicks where you write different custom renders. Everything will be in the one short and really reusable. But if you would ask me, should I start maybe with Maui right now? Because we have a couple of previews built already. For that, we have a really nice video from James Montemagno from Microsoft, where he asked when we need to start thinking and writing and Maui. And in short, at the moment, you need to start with Xamarin like forms because it's stable, tell all features, not all features still moved to Maui. And in the end of the year, it will be really easy to migrate existing Xamarin forms application into Maui applications. And also most of NuGets that you're using are still not ported. It will be mostly done till the end of the year. So right now, don't be scared, Xamarin don't dying, it will still get back patches, but all new feature right now going only to Maui. 
And in the end of the year, you can slightly uh, change your project to Maui with special extension and Visual Studio. And now we come to IDE. It's not all from Summerin world here, need to answer where you can write your code. And here we have post platforms, Windows and MacOS. Yeah, you need to have a Mac uh, OS somewhere in some Mac in the cloud or real one to could compile your code right now into uh, the iOS devices, for example, iPhone or iPads. But later with Maui, you really required only to have some real iPhone to have that. But ideas will not change. For Windows, it's Visual Studio powered by Rider, uh, uh, resharper from JetBrains, because it adds some features that are still missing in Visual Studio. But for Mac OS, we have two IDEs. IDEs. It's a uh, Visual Studio for Mac and Rider, because Visual Studio for Mac, for my own opinion, is not good enough like Visual Studio for Windows. We still miss a lot of features. And that, all that features gives for us a rider. But a rider in his site missed a couple of features that we have in the Visual Studio. For example, release packaging of iOS applications and so on. So you need to use both of them. Mostly you will spend like a 90% type of your coding in the rider and 10% for some packaging or configuration in the Visual Studio for macOS tools. And right after installing your EDA, you may be asking myself, what tools I need to use for Power Up Me? Do I need everything in Visual Studio? Or I need to download some extensions. And thanks for Kim. We have a really nice blog from this year with like 100 tools at all about different EDS extensions, uh, some also MUGAs there. It's really, really good to check it out when you start your new project because you may find something new, something that's just coming out and really cool, and maybe you want to use it. So where I can get all news and updates? How can I learn myself what's coming new in summary? And the most useful stuff is email from weekly summary. You could surprise there and once per two weeks, you will get an email about all news around the world that comes to summary. It's also about Kim and Luce Carter. It contains itself a uh, all blog post from a uh, planet summary. You could just go to his official site, but here is only RSS field, but you could explore the writers and all his blogs if you're interested by someone special. Also, it grabbed uh, from the blog post from the .NET Foundation. Also, you could there explore the community speakers. Here is much more if we compare it to summary uh, writers only. And also, it grabs everything from a Twitter where we have some announcing and tagging at the summary planet or summary weekly uh, page. So it's really if you subscribe, there will be podcasts, new videos, and, and a blog posts. So if we're talking about YouTube, I will not speak today about the Twitter or uh, Twitch because I don't use it. <laughs> Just because I do, I can't tell you who is a good streamer there, who are not. I will focus only on YouTube. So thanks to Magnum. He creates a lot of different videos about new features and uh, some reviews of some Apple technologies from a uh, summary guy perspective. Also, he has his own podcast. If you visit his site at his page at YouTube, you will find all links there in the details. Also, two more speakers you could to follow is a Kim and a David. I never watch any video from a Kim because he mostly on the streaming. He made really awesome, awesome example application we have today in the examples and on from him, but I never watch it because he's streaming and I can't read his blog post for five or eight minutes with all awesome examples, but when I need to watch a nine hours 
it's not to me, but I know that there are people who love watching it. So be free to follow him. Also really nice short videos about different aspects of uh, Xamarin, it's Xamarin Community Toolkit, and uh, some interesting stuff from Xamarin is from Geralt. He's making a short video about some special stuff, for example, binding, for example, connecting via Bluetooth, for example, show native pop-ups. Small video for a couple minutes, but you get everything you need to know about some special. Also official Xamarin developers page, and Xamarin guy. Also, we have a Xamarin University, but there are more videos only for beginners only, according to my perspective. Previously, a couple of years ago, it was uh, adding all time new interesting stuff, but right now all they goes to Xamarin developers. And last but not least is Daryl Crooks really nice interesting examples where they're rewriting popular dribble shots into Xamarin. So you can just find what you really would like to create and just see how they make that. It's really good to see how they achieve different UI as not the common controls on the UI. But the code is not so clear there because it's just an example code, but the whole idea is really nice if you just try to inspire yourself and know how it can be done. Okay, I want to create some reinforced application. What nucleus should I use? Before we start talking about that, let's hold for a moment with um, UI packs. Here I listed three most popular, but if you can, try to avoid them. They are really nice and you speed up if you have some small and even medium application, but if your application can change your UI a lot and make a lot of small stuff, it just can be unsupported by one of that extension packs. And then you can spend much more time during trying to customization, during mailing with them and want to achieve that. Yes, it can speed up you if your application is simple and just couple and require everything that it's provided, but that packs. But if you want something more, it's better to start you without them. And if you would like my advice, what you can select, I tell you the next. Synfusion is most popular, but you can make problem with um, licenses. They provide community free license if you write open source products. I don't get it. You can write license if you're an MVP. I don't get it. And when everything I try, they try to provide me a bill. So it's a minus, but it's my personal. I know a lot of people who use that and really happy. So you can may try, but you can face the problems. Telerik has less controls than Syfusion and less popular, but still pretty good. I don't face any problems there, but they don't have any community edition, but have a 30 days trial as far as I remember. So you could just try it in a month and then buy or leave it. And the third one is really powerful tables, powerful forms, but I never met any person that's still alive who use it for summary. So if you will be a dev expert, mobile Xamarin expert, I'm not sure if you will find a proper job, but if you have a web page that use Dev Express, it will be really nice if you can use it in the mobile as well, but it's not a common and not for everyone. And they're really expensive and still don't have a communities edition. Okay, first of all, all time, try to stay with the latest Xamarin Forms NuGet package with not pre-release package, it's important. And in, I know that when before 4.4, all versions could have some bugs and when they fix something, this, another side were broken. But after 4.4, all become really stable. And when they fix something, I don't face that they broke something else. And the latest 5.0.0 version is really stable. I'm really happy with that last. So, Xamarin Essentials. It's installed by default when creating a new project and it has a lot of awesome stuff. 
that just simplify writing an application. For example, battery sharing, uh, geolocation, geocoding, all that you could right now uh, achieve from the shared some informs project. And only one minus that it's all a static classes. So if you are writing in a proper way your code and using some IOC, you need to wrap it into your interface and then write to the research which are using it. It's slight minus, but it's a really useful nugget that for sure you will find a good for you. For example, we today will speak slightly about media picker, how to show video in your application. And you don't need to write anything in platform specific. You just use that and play the video. Third is a common uh, something community toolkit with a different effects or behaviors that you can write by yourself. And not in all projects why I use some really community toolkit, but it will just speed up for you because you don't need to write what is already written, written for you. And let's select MVVM framework. In Maui, we could select some MVU interesting frameworks or other, but in Sabrin, it's for the best for you to say this MVVM. Most solutions, most examples, I use that. And it's a goal a recommendation for use some MVVM. Most popular, you can see in this comparison table, but mostly in the large projects, I use them too is MVM Cross or Breeze Forms. They are both pretty good. It just depends on the team where you're using it. Uh, in all my life, I'm using only MVM Cross, but reading a lot different and speak about reason with someone who used it. And it's mostly depend on team where you are. What is I know? It's you don't have so much difference in the end. Also, if you have a smaller application just with a couple of screens, you may use something lighter. For example, Fresh, MVM Light, or Calibro Micro. Also, it's good to know that we have something special. For example, the active MVM frameworks. It's reactive UI, which framework itself, it could be replaced by all that. But if you want to use just for some specific logic in a couple of screens, you can write interop, where you connect MVM Cross or Prism with React UI. A blog post about that will be in, is in the link that you already scanned. Also, if you want to use only one most useful Rx operator during the search is a trot link, you can replace all large React UI framework with one you get the bounce monitoring. We just provide for you for us only one possibility to make trot link. I found was that it's really useful because for example, in summary application, I have only a couple of screens with search where I would like to use React UI and don't want to take all that you get package into my application. And that small device monitor is really useful. It just works and make only one stuff that it should do. Also, in from 4.4, as far as I remember, we have a shell. It's something different, something special and already built in into some reforms latest version, which allows you to write whole structure of application into one file and visually see where it's connected. You can easily modify fly out to tabs. It can be bottom tabs, top tabs, combine it together, combine its fly out. It's really hard, for example, to this MVM cross. But uh, most of frameworks are not connected with shell navigation itself. So you should select what you want to achieve. If it's a really large application, probably you need to go with cross or prism. But if it's a small one, you could combine fresh, light, and micro with shell or just use shell itself. It's really powerful just use it by yourself, but some slight frameworks just give you some couple adventures comparing to shell when it used to gather. Not separate. Okay, next new kit package is a skeleton. Most modern application use instead of some spinners inside the screen, such shadow or skeleton loading. It's really powerful with different uh, try with different modes to show that skeleton application. Here you can watch on the GIF. Next one is not a large but really hard to learn. E sharp. Why hard? Because you 
should be really good in mathematics, make an awesome feature set. And also you can have just a canvas where you can write, for example, some sign. But if you learn it, if you spend a couple of hours on the problems that you have what to achieve with that, you'll be really happy. It's really powerful, but starting with that, it will be hard for you. Carpnado, presentation forms. Also interesting tabs if you don't want to use a shell. They have an extended feature with a shadows and neomorphism. If you would like to make your app neomorphism, is a neomorphism, you definitely need to use that because it works pretty good on Android and iOS. It has some problems on UVP, but we don't speak today about all the platforms. We focus on the Android and iOS and works good on that both platforms. Extended pop-ups, RG plugin pop-up. It can show everything. Like it's really whole page in both platforms in the same way. It's really rich pop-ups. And really probably if you have anything larger than just, okay, cancel and showing some images, you need to use that. It's really stable and easy to start with that. FF image loading. It's more than optional, but it speed up your images. It can cache it, show from SVG and other interesting stuff. And it has pretty good render comparing to base built in. Also, you can even more speed up. I think I add block about that, but I'm not sure that you could speed up with uh, more advanced that made you uh, rendering. If you compare a uh, combined FF image loading with lit X, as far as I remember, I should check it out. But if you make it once, it will be really fast for all time. Major gradients. It's an extended gradients, which you could use in your application. We later we'll get back to this. You get because it's really awesome. Has a playground from where you could select more than seven hundred example of advanced CSS gradients and just copy and paste in your application and nothing else. You just place it in your page and use like a background or use say animations or clipping. It's built on a skia but provide for us more friendly interface to making all of that. And also it has a built-in reader of a CSS and converting it into something that Skia can understand and work with. And now let's select maps. Like 70 or 80% of the all application using maps nowadays. It's really something like a trend in 2021. And here we have pretty good Xamarin forms maps, which in iOS will be his native maps, in the Android will be Google Maps. But if you would like to use Google Maps in both uh, Android and iOS, in iOS we could install Google Play services and use them together, or just install Google Play services in a shared Xamarin forms project and use it for both platforms immediately. Also, really nice maps is Mapbox, but the only one you get is an Axon Macbox for forms, and we have a problems with Android right now, sir. I add GitHub for the page. Mapbox itself is really nice, but at the moment, the guys who write that you get fail Android, and you can find a lot more comments and possible solution how it may fix it for now. They promise that we'll change it in the future, but told me that it's that future can be in the heart of fear. So if you really would like to release your maps right now, try to avoid it. But if you won't use all that features that they have comparing to Google Play, that have slightly more and have good pricing, and you can write like half a year or try to resolve some of the uh, bugs by yourself or find my comments there, you can try that map. Also just a plus for Syncfuture that have his own maps, but I can't tell anything good or bad about that. Just for you knowing if you still want to select them. Again, cake view. They also have a gradients, but only couple colors only in one line, one layer. But what is killer feature is that you can modify each corner 
of that view itself. For example, we saw here will be that only two left was modified, it could on the right, on the left also, we could saw that we can change the stroke of the border and his color. Also, it has a clips. So we could easily clip something. It's really nice nugget. Most everyone use it because of the, that you can modify your colors. Animations. Enhanced animation can be easily shown in the both Android and iOS thanks to Lottie. We will speak at it slightly later, but it's something that probably you wanna use and need to install. Share transactions. Really nice feature, mostly used in other applications. Really easy done because you just provide an ID of element which I use in a share transaction. Fluent validation. Yeah, sometimes you need to validate something from UI and mostly we are writing our own solutions, but it's really can speed up you if you don't forget to check it out because it has a lot of built-in rules, for example, rather than not empty, uh, less or more is email and some other that you could explore that like it any or even more right now, built-in validation and really cool, is cool possibility to enhance an abstract validator and create your own and use it uh, in a fluent way, I mean, just by a dot. Now some field dot validate, some field dot rule for and write everything. Uh, okay, and let's hold up because otherwise we will not have time for modern UI. It's a golden pack for you if you're starting or writing this application. It's a, not all you need to use in your application, but it's the first new that you wanna to check if you consider a new feature and searching how can it be done. So let's start with modern UI at last. <laughs> and let's start from a scheduler, pretty popular. Um, really a lot of applications use some scheduler. And first of all, we need to separate what should be done after what. For example, we have a collection, each element collection is separated to three different implementation time by time. And at first we try to implement the top of the page. It's really easy to achieve because in the grid, it places everything in the one layer. So if we place image first, and then just some margin from the top, it, we could achieve that effect that our image goes to separate row where we already have some text. This is really easy done by collection view, where we have just something in the grid, in the left part and in the right part with a package view or box view, we have separate content. What is interesting, it's really easy done that card, but a feature list is a separate collection with a scroll. For example, it also could be as in a block collection view, but we don't need all features from collection view and we can replace it with a stack layout, bin double layout. It is in the links. So I will not stop on that. And let's see the next example. Here, it's a video from YouTube. So you could just see how it's step-by-step -step implemented like in 15 minutes, everything on the screen. Here we have a media element from so many essentials in the back. In the top, we have a path three different paths with different excluding level. And the both username and password fields are modified by custom renders. It's a really cool video because that looks really awesome. Video playing in the background, it has some opacity so you can see the video in the back when you're writing your credentials. Next example by Doubt of Genau will speak a little more about the path. And here, first of all, let's take a closer look for paths. For example, previously we can achieve the same by box view with a corner radius to the half of the wide, but if it's resizing not correctly in some platforms because it wide request and head request just requesting the wide and height, but it can be less because the platform itself consider should be equal to the same or I can decrease it or increase it slightly. So we can't have so much perfect ellipse. 
so much perfect circle, sorry. But right now with that ellipse, we could achieve it. And also we could clip an image with ellipse geometry, just placing the center of an image and the radius, how it may be clipped. Also that button in the bottom done by a path. You can see it here. Let's take a close look to a path. Uh, ellipse itself, it's also a path because it's geometry, same as a path, but it's a predefined one. So you could just use without thinking how the path is done inside. But if you want to make your own, you need to write in the simple structure start from M and I attach the complete block about how you could create your open paths. It's not so hard, for example, if we compare it to Skillshare, but needs some time for you to understand how you can write it. Also, really nice features that already built in into some forms in a theme binding. For example, most of our applications right now like to have already defined light and back theme. Here, how we could just change that in line. But what is the proper colors for light and dark mode? The great post from Gerald where he's comparing and showing uh, what colors Hamza looks in iOS, just for your inspiration. So you could know how to change that and do you need to just, uh, apply the same colors in Android or no. So you could just go and check it out. Also, what is good is provide a system name of that. So it will be changed automatically if we don't uh, decline it in the first. Because if we would like to react to system change in the colors, we have a special event where we can surprise and change it manually. For example, here's the special extension just use XAML, but also we could use the same in the back, put behind in C sharp, or but automatically. For example, if you don't add anything, for text, as it shows here, it will be changed automatically according to iOS, uh, iOS colors that we define. But for Android, we need to check it out if it will still good or change it because we could provide the same changes only per some platform by own platform tech here. Okay, Skia. It's a huge block, but really good for you if you'd like to start with Skia. But prepare yourself because we have some mess here. I don't a fan of a mess, but this block is really simple. You understand everything you need to create such circle with a process loading inside itself. I'm not remind if we you know we don't have a GIF in the end. That's really nice. We have a link to GitHub in there on the blog post. You could download, check it by yourself. And all that math that we have here is described really simple. Really nice blogger for JetBrain they advocate. And I really love how they create that cover image for his blogs. And time to speak about Lotte. I don't know if you expect it to be hard or not, but it's damn simple. It's all we need to show the complex animation. You just need to download free or buy some JSON uh, that animation convert to special JSON. You could do it official in that page for a lot of animations. And can just modify it by on click on finish, it's playing, you can everything bind to your view model. And it's just will play and works. I far as I remember, I don't face any problems with the lot animation. Only once in the summary four it was, but it was really easy fixed. Uh, thanks to answers on the GitHub. In the latest year, I don't face any problems. And let's come back to Kim. Hands on. It's one more really nice example of modern applications and how it can be easily done in summary. For example, flipping of the card. It's shown and right now it's flipped. And what you all you need to do is just waiting while the first moment rotates by minus 90, then rotating second, show it, height first and rotate back to zero. So first that's part and second, that's why we have some like near 
something like it was flipped and it has real something in the back. And if you think that I will play something, wow, it's so easy. Yeah, but later we have much more interesting examples. So just go away. It's easy and it's easy can be done everywhere. For example, how we open, we just make two, uh, two oh, sorry, forget that for, um, for, uh, uh, two animations on. First, it's fading, and second, it's rotating. First, we don't wait for any of the first image. That's why we are placing that underline. It means that it's not create anything in the memory and don't wait to end of that task operation and just continue to the next. We can replace that with task when all, and you could saw it the next block. But if you have only a couple of lines, it's really easier and readable if you write in that way. Also, closing just the same. At first, we find from zero to one and rotating. And that one, second, is we're taking back to minus 90 and finding to zero. Similar to that from Sherlin is with a driver license animation. There is much more animations and in her block, we use uh, that task when all and waiting for every animation in that. If you have just a couple of animations, it's easier to read when it's without task when all. But if you have a long list of them, visually it's easier to grab them with task when all. But from the code, it should be much different. I know that from CLI, it will be different during compiling, but in mobile, world, we don't so interesting looks how it will be compiled in the CLI, each lines, should we have three lines or two lines, it still be really fast in both ways. You don't need to care about it. You don't write a backend where it's really important. Next example, it's really slightly tricky. It's cool. Let me show it how it looks like my phone moment. Because it's really nice dribble shot, but not nicely implemented at all, but still has interesting feature that you could see or use. Let me, can I, I can drop it, drop it right now in the center because of, okay, sorry. So um, here we can see how share transaction get works. We can saw that how it's in the top. Awesome, so we just send in here an ID and it's a good part of that example. How the styles are implemented, how it looks like, but it's a minus. Because when it was implemented, we have a container here. And this just image that has a minus uh, X to the top. And it's a bad. Because if we would like to place both on the same grid and just make in margin for the container, itself, this image plays the last one, it will be power it, and during the changing uh, the cards, it will not be cut out as we saw here. And also for us, it even don't resolve that and we have an uh, image inside. So it's how you can easily change that example to the better one. Also, we could saw that we don't have a shadow here. Thanks to Sharpnado, you get you could easily add that shadow. There is the same blue as here we have. And as you may saw, we have some small animation during the storm. It could be done really easy because we have an event. And when it's finished, we have something like that. Because it's you may saw that it's slightly scale. Also, we could uh, make it slightly better if we just rotate slightly and scale right in the back, like in the dribble shot. But all other part of that example is still pretty good. You could just check out the code and look how it was done. Okay, land mode, really nice uh, example. Oh, out of time, so let's faster. What is good here is how you can open, how you create that views that can opening during the pressing or that parallax effect, effect if we just uh, scroll something. Sorry, I will need to speed up out of time. Yeah, it's all good. Oh. And if you open here, you can see a parallax effect. 
when we slide in the bottom, but our picture changed his size itself also. And it's done really easy. Expanding and collapsing on, uh, ah, I don't have it. Uh, on that chart is done really easy because we just change the uh, control height with a translating. And parallax is done slightly tricky because we extend the scroll view, but it's still pretty easy to implement. So let's come to more UI and UX trips, uh, tips and tricks. First of all, all examples in all blocks, even if my don't use styles, never do that in your application. Never. No, not never. Try to avoid as much as you can because we can write a style and then just use a style. For example, button, you know, a charcoal gray button. It's a cornflower button. Everything I described there. And it's really cool. But we have a mind, we can't merge a couple styles. For example, if we have two styles and would like to have something the compare from a boss, we need to create a third one where we could write based on and then com uh, combine the values. But I really love to write CSS. Yeah, you can write and use CSS in summary. And it's much more readable. For example, for you, what is easier to read? All that properties or properties here? Uh, previous example, we use style for the style from static resource. In this example, we use style class. Mm -hmm. And what is cool, we could combine them just in line. But if you want to write still XAML file, XAML styles and combine them, you can use a class instead of X name. And if you use a class, you still can use style class and combine a lot of styles from XAML. It's really powerful. For example, I have a lot of labels, but labels are predefined, but that size are really different. So I can create uh, 70 styles with each name and I don't know how to name it even. So I just create a simple style for each property that I can combine and just change a font size in line. For example, this is icon label, it will be white and fill. Second is a bold white, Field. Third is a white regular field with different size only. Okay, Magic Gradients Playground. I will not stop here for long because we need to cover some more, but it's really powerful playground because it's a whole power of Magic Gradients, in my own opinion. Because you can write in some hard mm, Gradients, but if you really want like something special, for example, uh, we can inspect how it's created, and you can see it's not even so hard. But right by your hand, it will be a tricky. And if you're not sure, it will feel for your application or not. You could just explore here how it would be going. And if you still want to use, just share. Copy and I know paste. And here we have everything. You could just copy and paste into your application. It's all you need. So just explore, find you want, and use. Also, if you would like to know what we else can do and how you could do, we have everything in README, but for a live example, you could just saw here a text with a gradient with different eclipse. There is different clipping. Also some animation is still in preview, but everything else is stable and you could use. Let's continue. Here are a couple more channels for your inspiring and growing like a designer, you growing your designer part of some developer because not every time designers are good in the decisions, not all the time we have designs in our projects. So you can review this guy with his awesome examples of UI for Android and iOS. Some, he had a lot of video about web, but we don't focus on that. There's still pretty uh, large collection of videos about mobile design. I love UI. Also has a lot of interesting examples. It's just a dribble shots, but 
good for your inspiration and you could just saw how something were done, how it looks like and try to reimplement in summary. And let's stop on this channel for a moment. It's a Poland designer, really nice. He's created a lot of interest in different courses by showing how normal fees, glass morphe is done from shape till the end. And according to that, you could grow your experience in the design first and second, know how it implementing by designers and just make the same steps, adding blue, adding opacity in summary and just achieve just the same. What I might recommend from him, it's a course. Yeah, I've pre-order it. And I still think it really works for you. I um, remove all prices because it may change because uh, it's pre-orders for only 1,000 copies and like only 300 or even less left right now, but it's really worth it. I thought uh, we said Malevich some time ago and it's really cool and professional. He can even review some of your designs for free. He has a special videos on his channel where he re reviewing it, fixing it, and telling you what uh, goes wrong there. Also, he had his uh, Discord channel, uh, not the Discord Slack, sorry, uh, I closed Slack, okay, never mind, uh, where he can, uh, you can ask him something, you can uh, show him your designs, I could get some opinion from him and from other Poland and not only Poland designers. Also, he had an awesome book, about UI design and no, I still don't buy it, but I plan in the future. It, you could download a few chapter and look, check it out, is it worth for you? Also in his channel, you could find everything from zero to the end, how to make in Figma, Neomorphies, Glassmorphies or Aurora design, but set steps are really applicable for your as Xamarin developer because you can just make the same in XAML. And the last thing, okay, preparing yourself. What an application without a test. UI test, unit test, TDD, but no, one, write tests. Let's go, write your comments. Oh, why I think so? I saw, some application which just starts really good when everything was called a test, but later during the development test, not was written by TDD and just you saw the logic and you need to write them because you have some percentage to cover and you just make the test that just need to apply that its logic is good. And later comes bugs and you need to fix bugs in the logic and fix in your test. And I don't think it's a good. Yeah, if you're still pretty good to separate most of logic to separate project, you can write TDD there, you can write unit tests and it's good. But speaking about the shared some different project, everyone starts from UI or code behind and write commands and only then comes to logic. It's never a TDD, forget about it. Unit tests mostly write, written after logic are done and just try to accept that it was good. It's, we still have bugs. UI tests are right slightly longer than unit tests. It will be not so so cheap. It will be expensive by time consuming, by price of the devices, and you don't really need it. When you need a test, some bugs come to you. Then you need to think where is the bug on UI or in the uh, business logic. In the business logic, we write one test that showing us that it fails, then we fix the logic, see the test works, and we're good. We don't write either the test. We cover only that one bug. Same with UI test. We have bug in the shop screen. We write test only for a shop screen where we can uh, reproduce that bug, fix that bug, see the test passed, and it's okay. Don't write tests for tests. Don't write tests for whole 100% coverage. In a mobile way, it's not working. Yesterday was a cool presentation in the .NET about the tests and the clean architecture, but in other world, we don't, it don't just works. How hard you will try it. Waiting for your comments. <laughs> and that's all. Sorry, I'm slightly out of time. 
but you could just take screenshot of that page and in a couple of seconds, I think we could go back to the studio, just a couple of seconds so everyone could take a screenshot. You can follow my blog on Medium where I describe new features from Magic Gradients and interesting implementation in Xamarin UI, for example, Country Picker. I just don't have the time to place it here. You could just go there and check it out. Follow me on the Twitter for other news and thanks for watching. I think we are good. Thank you.